I would like to minister to you today concerning you. Yes, this is Armed Forces Veterans Day, but who are you? Let me bring it to light a little bit, and we'll go from there. Reading today from Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, Scripture says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Preachers have been preaching about the end times for many years. I remember pastor in California when I first came to, to the Lord in the 70s, and he was preaching about the end times are coming, and I can't wait. I remember a buddy of mine, when we were kids, we, we read the book 2001, A Space Odyssey. And we're thinking, oh, man, this is going to be great. And we're going to get, it's 2020. Yeah. <laughs> 2001, come and gone, Miss Peggy. It's over there. <laughs> but the question I have is, when is it going to really happen? When is it going to be? And I'd like to take a moment to bring something up for you to think about, for you to put in your mind and your heart. How are we going to live and face these troubling times? We just went through the election. And there's all kinds of things on the news and in the newspapers and the magazines and everything about how that. Biden is a super champ and how he did all this. And there's all this other information about how Trump is going to file a lawsuit. He's going to take it into the hands of the court and, and do this to get the votes recounted. And it's a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I am here to tell you it's time for you to put on your armor. Amen. What's the armor? The helmet the breastplate, so on and so forth, right? First of all, we've got to remember that as long as we're living for God according to the Scriptures, not by what our minds say, but according to the Word of God, we're doing that following the rules in the rule book. <laughs> then God will help us through it all. Now, I, I did a little research I couldn't quite figure out all of what he was saying here, Zerubbabel. But what was said here is the, there was an angel that came to, to the prophets, and they were talking, they were doing, and he was trying to get it understood and carried away to understand that this stuff happens by my spirit, saith the Lord. Because what was happening is that the temple was being built, and it was... You know, hands and knees and hammers and the whole, all of what they used, construction tools in those days to build this. But the scripture goes on to let us all know that it was by his spirit and the spirit power. I want you to understand me today that it's the spirit. If the spirit is not pushing you and shoving you and in you and filling you and giving you direction and giving you the right mind to think you need to stop and pray and get it back because it's the spirit that moves within the man to build the temple it was the spirit of God that moved to strengthen to to get things to really happen you see, the scripture teaches us completely in Ezekiel chapter 4. Not by mind nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You will succeed because of my spirit. Amen. Though you are few and weak, therefore no mountain, however high, can stand before Zerubbabel. For it will flatten out before him, and Zerubbabel will finish building his temple with many shouts of thanksgiving and God's mercy, declaring that it was all done by grace alone. Another message that I received from the Lord says, Zerubbabel laid the foundation of this temple, and he will complete it. Then you will know these messages are from God, the Lord Almighty. Do not despise this small beginning, for the eyes of the Lord rejoice. 
to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, for these seven lamps represent the eyes of the Lord that see everywhere in the world. By his spirit, by his spirit. Now, there's a lot of us, most of you know that I was in the building trades for many years, and, and some of you kind of look at me a little funny when I shake your hand because I forget not to be easy sometimes. I don't mean to. It's just something that comes with time. But we've got to allow God to move. The Holy Ghost will be our constant companion as long as we're living according to the scriptures. The Spirit is, let me put it in military terms for you. The Holy Ghost is your battle buddy. Amen. He has your back. He has your flank. He's your point man. He's your company commander. He sees everything that's going on, and he even knows when the enemy comes to cause trouble or to hit you or to cause trouble within your life. The enemy has long, too long troubled the hearts and the minds of mankind throughout the years. I can tell you this, that I have had many fights, and I don't want to fight no more. I just want God to lock him up. Put him in the Holy Ghost jail, prison. These are the last days, and war is on its way, and we must, we must be prepared. With all this political stuff going on, I made the mistake. I said, it looks like Biden got voted. Don't count him. Don't say that. <laughs> I just repeat what the man in the news said. I'm not. Don't believe a word of that. We're coming back. There's people protesting on the good and protesting on the bad. They're coming in force. They're coming in strength. Too many people are going, working in trouble and pushing hard to move this, this election and get it all changed around. And all of these uh, 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 votes, these papers, they've been messed with. They've been... People's pushing buttons and doing all the wrong things. We got to go back and get the vote right. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, but God does. And right now, I say to you, count on the Spirit to lead you and guide you and pray that God has his miraculous way in the conclusion of this election. Amen. All right. Here's what we're supposed to do. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Anybody ready? Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay it hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. How many of you are soldiers? I don't see everybody's hand. Yeah. You're going to be a soldier before you leave here today. <laughs> a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that worth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So what are we saying? This is what I'm trying to bring cause. Veterans of the kingdom of God are spirit-led and kingdom-focused. Hello, are you with me? Yeah. So we come today for Wednesday, for Veterans Day. So how many of you ever served in the military? Okay, a few of us. All right, men, women, boys, girls, all the above. I remember when I was young, my dad used to tell me war stories. My dad was 20-something years in the Air Force, flew Berlin, flew um, Korea, flew Vietnam. And as a young kid, I'm thinking, oh, that's got to be great. I want to be one of them flying guys. But I wasn't, I wasn't smart enough to pass pilot's test. It's okay. 
Somebody else can do the flying. I'll just do the riding. <laughs> that seemed easier, huh? <laughs> so we thank and honor all of those who served and gave their hearts and lives when they enlisted in the military. Because there's many, as Pastor said earlier, there's many who never returned. There's still, there's still uh, festivals and, and t times of remembrance and so forth for Grandpa and this one and that one that served and gave their lives and all of that business against Nazi Germany, against Japan, against all of these people that were trying to take over the world, so on and so forth. Amen. How many of you didn't serve in the military but had someone that you're with that was in the military? Okay. Okay. Well, what are we to do? We enlisted in the battle of World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Iran, Iraq, on and on and on and on. I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, saints of the Most High God, we're in a battle that does not use guns and bullets and bombs. We're in a battle that uses bad spirits to cause problems, to cause troubles, to bring sickness, to bring problems into our life. But I stand here and say before you today, we are going to take a stand against the wiles of the devil, and we are going to be victorious as long as we let the Spirit move any way he decides is proper. Amen. Hello? Hello? If you are not ready for that, you better get ready because that's where we're going today. So what do you do? You enlist. How many have enlisted in the armies? Of the Holy Ghost. Okay. How many of you retired? Can't happen. You don't retire from the work of God. You cannot retire from being in the armies of the Most High God. When I get done today, we're going to have a reenlistment right here. Right here today. God has called each and every one of us to preach the gospel. It teaches us, teaches us in the work of God in Mark chapter 16, and he said in them, go into all the world and preach. But that doesn't mean you got to have a sermon, because a lot of us don't have a sermon when grandma comes by, or Uncle Bill, or whoever, but you know who Jesus is, you know what the Holy Ghost is. You know what's going on, and all you have to do is find that little spot, and it always happens, and move in. Say, so, hey, let me explain something to you. Things could be better if you let Jesus Amen. lead you and guide you. Amen. The Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to ask you, a good question today. How many of you have ever been through Holy Ghost Boot Camp? Well, we got one here. And we're going to keep it going. Holy Ghost Boot Camp. <laughs> See, because the Holy Ghost is your drill instructor. Trains you the, in the truth, prepares you for battle. He's your friend that knows what you need to work with, to be conquerors, to be victorious in this world. He is faithful to do what you need to understand to, because he loves you more. The Holy Ghost and the Spirit and God loves you more than anybody else in this congregation could ever love you. Amen. <laughs> you know, I thought once, who could love my wife more than me? Him. Ooh. I wanted to be. Anyway, anyway. He will not allow you to be a POW. As long as you pray daily and stay close to him, he'll put you, take you out of the battle whenever it's possible. How many know what R&R &R is? 
Somebody tell me. The Holy Ghost can give you R and R if you're close and tight with the Lord in the battle that we are facing every day. How many love watching the news? How many of you love driving on the freeway right after work? Only God can help you pull through those times. I was on my way someplace, and I couldn't figure out, why is everybody going so slow? Everybody got off of work. I don't know. I don't understand this. The speed limit says 35, not 3.5. Hello? <laughs> I don't understand. Our enemy will try to separate us every chance he can, everything. Try to find something that confuses your mind, up, messes up your positive thinking, gets things going crazy. Our enemy is Lucifer and all his little buddies. He will say that you've been abandoned. He will say, let me tell you what he tells me all the time. He tells me that I'm a no good, worthless, useless piece of old moldy something rather poop. All the time. I hear that from the adversary all the time. I, I fight daily with that issue. I don't know how you are. Anybody here suffer with depression? Have issues with depression? Or am I the only one? I know one thing. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But I keep forgetting that when the problems get hot. When the fire gets hot, I should remember and I should know. And I am hard-headed, knuckle-headed, and I forget. And I go, why me? Anybody ever do that? Huh. So your only hope is just to surrender and let him have his way. Never should you yield to those lies. Your enemy is heartless and cruel, and he has no mercy, and he will beat you down and seek in every and any which way he can to destroy you, to cause troubles. Have your children, depending upon your age, have your children come against you. Have your wife come against you. Have your husband come against you. Your relatives, on and on and on. Everywhere you go. When things seem to be going just right, it seems like the boss at work has got something. Amen. Huh? Anybody ever walk in them shoes? <laughs> or do I have the only pair? <laughs> so it's time for us to call out for the Holy Ghost. It's not Amen. by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. You know, if you're wore out and if you're tired and if you run down and it seems that all you got is just that still small voice, God will hear and send the reinforcements. Uh -huh. I'm going to say it. If all you have, you're wore out, you're tired, you've done all you could do, you've thought all, whatever, everything's coming against you, and all you have is, Lord need help he'll send reinforcements <laughs> too many times we think it ain't gonna happen it can't happen ah uh, but i'm telling you it will if it can if you got your mind right quit acting like me and start doing how the word teaches us i have to take that word and smite myself with it frequently to get back on the right road to victory. You know, when you're going down that road and it comes to a Y, you go left or right. This can tell you. <laughs> this has the directions. Amen. We need to remember that. After going through all your training, through Holy Ghost boot camp, and you, and you won your 
stripes or your medal or whatever it is that you've got. Understand this, there's going to be good times and bad times, but stay away from those thoughts and those problems and those issues. But are you ready for battle? Are you ready to fight? You know, Miss Peggy, I, I, I only have a pistol in reality, physical. But you know what else? Denise, I got a Holy Ghost shotgun. Amen. I'll say it real good. I got a Holy Ghost shotgun. <laughs> Anybody ready? <laughs> now, when you're in the battle and you're in the midst of fighting, you can always call upon the Lord. It seems to be too often, too many times, every one of us, including me, we forget to call upon the Lord because it seems like everything comes against us. Our mind's on it. We can't think. We can't. Everything's all fussed up. Everything's going this way and that way. And now, what am I going to do about this? I tell you, Pastor, what am I going to do? Miss Linda, what am I going to do? <coughs> call upon the Lord. Say, that's too hard. Wake up and smell the coffee. Hello? Your prayer is the call of air support. If you call upon the Lord, he's going to bring his B-50 trues and drop those Holy Ghost bombs right where they belong. <laughs> when you call up for air support, you commit the battle into the Lord's hands. You do not advance until he does the work. Just take a minute, sit in your foxhole, and watch him do the job. I know we don't have a foxhole in the Air Force. <laughs> but if you let me, I'll sit next to you. Go ahead. Joe left. He was in the Army. <laughs> the Word of God is your primary weapon. And the Holy Ghost is the ammunition that gives life to the Word. The problem is that many have the word and are defeated for they lack the Holy Ghost and refuse to let the Lord work in the life-giving power of the word of God. Yeah. Forsake those who deceitfully use you and, and, and call upon the name of the Lord. And it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Yeah. I'm going forward. I'm going to make it happen. The problem is that many have the word, they're still defeated because they don't go to it. They lack the spirit to lead and guide them, to set them on fire, to load them with life-giving power. Anybody ever been shot by the adversary and hurt? The Holy Ghost is your medic. When you've been wounded, he comes and brings healing. He is a radio man that takes all your calls and all your messages straight to headquarters. And there's no static or communication problems. Say, for God is commander in chief. It will bring us victory and it will be victorious. I don't want Biden. I don't want Trump. I want God Almighty. Amen. Who's your president? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Never forget this. Only through God's Holy Ghost can a Christian accomplish the amazing works of the Lord. Never, never, never will we see the fullness of God through our own efforts and abilities. Don't happen. I can't do it. I need help. Jesus! How many have to be quiet at home? Quit. Quit. When you need God, scream it. Jesus! Does that hurt your feelings? Too bad. <laughs> That's how I'm going to do it. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 17 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells within you? Unless you shut the door and didn't let him in. But he's coming in. If you do it right, live right, he's coming in. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are. I'm coming, and I'm coming, and I'm coming strong. I'm coming fast, and I plan on getting with the program. So get out of the way. Get out of the way. Now, we've all been together a long time. Many of you seen me up. Some, many of you seen me down. Many of you seen me in between. Some of you don't even know if I'm going the right direction. Neither does pastor. That's why he's got to knuckle my head around sometimes. <laughs> you know, you can, you're only going to go if you stay on the right road. Right. On the right track. You're only going to get to the right place if you stay in the right place. If you're here and you're still battling problems in your life, God is still here to set you free and help you and get you going. You didn't get here today by accident or by appointment, but God chose to bring you here today to this church, to this meeting, to this service, so you could hear and understand and receive proper training for the battle that's still coming. We're, we, we're in an in a constant spiritual battle every day, every day, every day. You know, we get in situations and we feel like, I got victory. And the devil sends something else along, causes a little issue on another side. And do everything he can, everything he can to bring you down, to cause you problems. Always. But you got to remember God can take care of everything if we call upon him and let him and trust in him and quit trying to do it ourselves. Amen. We still have a greater war coming, especially with politics the way they are and all these different things and all this, I don't know what to believe, but all this stuff about China doing this and that and they're saying that China created COVID-19 to cause this world problem so they could reign the world. I've heard all kinds of stuff. I don't know what all that's all about, but I know who outrules him. I knew that who can overthrow them. I know the one that's got the biggest and the best office in Washington, D.C., him. <laughs> we still have a war. So whose side on your on? God's or your own? There is no neutral ground. There is no fence. It's either all for Jesus or all for you. What kind of soldier are you right now? The choice is yours. Victory can be won. You can join the only army that is destined to win. We can't prove to you that somebody else has got all the answers or a few of the answers, and any of that, but I can prove to you that Jesus Christ is the man crucified, gave his life for you and I, and the word of God is put forth to be your weapon, to be your guidance, to be your comforter, to help you, to guide you, to lead you, to open up your knowledge and understanding of what is going to happen and what needs to happen and how we're supposed to do it and get there. The victory is yours. The victory can be won. You can join the only army, or you can skip and go sidewards. Why not surrender to the Lord? Why not give yourself to him? He loves you, and he, he wants you to be on the winning team. He will help you to overcome sin, addictions, and habits. He has all the power to set you free forevermore. How many of you have had something in your life that God delivered you from permanently, forever, forever, forever? All right, think about it. As we give ourselves to God, he will use us in greater ways than you can ever imagine. We simply just need to understand to be willing to continue 
Continue. You like that? Continue. That means you've been doing it now for a while. Continue to do the work of God called you to do, not to quit. Amen. What are you going to say to your brand new neighbors about the house next to you? <laughs> what about that lady that ran you over with the shopping cart in the grocery store? <laughs> What about that man that pulled up next to you at the gas station, grabbed the, the gas pump before you, even though you were there first? Yeah. Hello? What are you going to say to them? How are you going to react? What are you going to do? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, Hello, are we doing that? Amen. Are we doing that? Amen. Holy Ghost Boot Camp says that's the way to do it. Amen. And turn from your wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. How many soldiers we got in the house today? Amen. Huh? Okay, we're going to do some more. If you're a soldier, you need to follow these. Now, if you want a copy of these, I can email them to you. Or Miss Linda, she's got it all. She made a couple of copies, I guess, but not enough to go around something. Anyway, here, the, here, here it is. If you want me to go slow so you can write them down, that's good too. But here it is. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior of the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the word are my weapons of warfare. Amen. I've been taught by the Holy Ghost, trained by the experience, tried by the ad, ad, uh, adversity, and tested by fire. If God needs me, I'm there. I'm a soldier, a prayer warrior. I am not a baby. I do not need to be pampered, petted, prim, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I'm a soldier, a prayer warrior. No one is to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, and taste me or lure me. I'm a soldier, a prayer warrior. I am not a wimp. I am in place, saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. I am committed. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. If I leave with nothing, I still come out even. I will win. My God will supply all my needs. I am more than a conqueror. I will always triumph. I can do all things through Christ who triumphs me. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. Devils cannot defeat me. People cannot delusion me. Weather cannot weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. Governments cannot silence me. And hell cannot handle me. <clears throat> I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. Even death cannot destroy me. For when my commander calls me to this battle, there I am. He will promote me to a captain and then bring me back to rule this world someday with him. You believe that today? How many of you retired? How many want to re-enlist? Come here. Come right here. We're going to re-enlist. Don't stay there. Come on. Re-enlist. Come on. Join the Army. Your term just about up. It's time to re-enlist, Brother Allen. It's time to give and get the going. Anybody else? Come on. All right. Let's join together. 
Great Heavenly Father, we love you, appreciate you, we lift you up, magnify your name, and we're asking you right now, Lord, to strengthen us and build us and take us again into your arms and your hands and mold us to which you'd have us to be and let us become victorious in your name and your power and your spirit over the things of this world, over the things that hinder and bind, and let us be victorious and give you the power to work in our lives and hinder those things that cause problems, and let us be victorious, victorious, victorious. I want to walk with you everywhere you go. I want you to be by my side. I want you to strengthen me and give me the power to overcome. We love you and we thank you and appreciate you for all that you're doing. Take these three that are with me right now this time and re them into the power and the great armies of the wonderful God that we serve. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. All right.